prayer. Good evening, saints. It's a good day. Hallelujah. Let's uh, jump right into this thing. We're going to open up in prayer. And uh, this is the last lesson for prayer T222 slash T599. It's lesson eight. Um, the uh, page that you're going to be on, on is lesson eight, three keys to answered prayer. And you're going to listen to my spin as always on these lessons. So let's just open up in prayer and thank the Lord for, for what he's going to do, is doing, and is about to uh, work in our lives today. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're the teacher. We thank you that our hearts are open to you and we receive all that you have for us today. We ask you to solidify your word in our hearts and the truth in our hearts. And help us to walk through these dark times in a way that our light is constantly shining and that we are effective and affecting every person that we come in contact with. I believe your kingdom is going to come. It is here on earth right now as we move. And it is your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. I thank you that there's no sickness, no disease, no tears, no none of that stuff in heaven so we declare it for this earth as we do what you call us to do as we move when you tell us to move as we uh, share your word as you direct us so fill us more of your word more of you more direction more clarity father in the mighty name of jesus do that today amen hallelujah we are in our last lesson and uh, the lesson reads for starters three keys to answered prayer and I may as well give you the three keys right up front and as you know my keys and someone else's keys don't look quite the same but last I heard Jesus had the keys and uh, I'm set free, and guess what? I know some stuff because he's told me, amen? So I'm going to share this with you. Pray you receive it. Uh, pray that you're able to uh, solidify this in your heart and that you can move with boldness and power and in victory and without fear. Hallelujah. So key number one, you must write this down. Know that God answers your prayers. He answers. Not that he answers just your prayers. Know that God answers. That's number one. Number two, know that God answers. And number three, guess what? Know that God answers. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what formulas they come up with. There's just something that I know. He answers. Period. I can't explain it. I don't have every answer to everything, but knowing this allows me to understand that when I ask as his child, he answers. Amen? So in knowing that God answers, he, we know that he answers us, and we know that in order for us to see the result of that answer, we need to be persistent. Would you agree that persistence is something that would help us? in our, in our uh, endeavor to wait on God, to, to, to understand that, uh, that we don't always see his answer uh, the way we want it to manifest. There are times that he does things differently, but yet he what? He answers. Uh, in number two, knowing that God answers, we need to be dedicated to his will and his ways. Many people want answered prayers, and they're not asking the right stuff. They want answered prayers, and they're asking something that is contrary to his will. There are people that are, are living a life that is not that does not glorify God, and they want their prayers answered. Now, understand, God is not answering your prayers because you're so good. He's answering your prayers because Jesus paid the price for you to have access into this place called the throne room where you can come in boldly and ask, and guess what? He loves you enough and cares enough about you 
to answer you. Now, the answer that you get may not be the answer you want, but he answers. Do you believe that? Because you are asking for something that's contrary to his will. You're going to get an answer. It just may not be what you, what you want. Amen? So, and number three, know that God answers. You got to have his purpose at heart. If he's called you to a purpose, if he's given you a command, if he's given you a direction, you need to be in that in order for you to be able to flow in his power and in his will. If you are not going to be about his heart, what are you asking for, really? What are you thinking you're going to get, really? Does that bring condemnation on people? No, it just means that our focus has to be him. In the meantime, he's given us an amazing place here where we can enjoy life and, and be fruitful and we can be and multiply and, and, and we can increase. And that's all nice, but there is a purpose with which you've been called. And asking for stuff just for the sake of asking for stuff really doesn't make sense when the word of God says that he knows what you have need of. So to me, that makes sense. So those are the three keys to answered prayer, and that's the end of this course. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I mean, when you think about it, all the things that we've spoken of come down to this. Do you believe that God answers? And if you believe that God answers, then there's a couple of things that you have to understand. Number one, God is faithful. Number two, God is faithful. And number three, God is faithful. There's nothing else, period. He's faithful. I don't have formulas for you. I don't have, you know, great extensive teachings on things. There's just certain things that you know about God. You know, if you have a relationship with someone, right, you pretty much know them intimately. You know them. You know, you know how, what they're going to say. You know how, how they're going to react. You know how they feel. You know what to say to make them feel a certain way, and you know what not to say so they don't feel a certain way. Relationship is important in getting your prayers answered. Not that you are so perfect in your relationship, but the fact that you're in a relationship is why your prayers are going to be answered. Because you have to be in a relationship with the Lord Jesus. Amen? You have to be in a relationship with your daddy, God. you got to know who's your daddy. He loves you. He paid a dear price for you. He's not willing that any should perish. So you have to remember these things as who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen? So, in a relationship, you find yourself attentive, responsive, dedicated, giving, faithful, truthful, loving, right? These are all things that we find in a relationship. Well, let's, let's look at these things. Attentive. In saying uh, or in looking at um, how God is attentive to us, his word says that he knows what you need before you even ask. There's a scripture that says that he knows what you have need of, right? So, he's attentive to you. Responsive. Moses has this issue with God's people, and he goes to the Lord, and he says, these people whom you gave me, they're just making me miserable, and I'm sick and tired of them complaining. That's all they do all day is complain and complain and complain and complain. Wait a minute, Moses, you're complaining to God. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so God says, Moses, I am attentive to your very request. I know what's going on. I understand, and you know what? You're absolutely right. So this is what I'm going to do, Moses. I'm going to destroy all of them, and I'm going to start with you. Is that attention or what? I mean, Moses got a response to his heart condition. He did. He got a response. And actually, it was the response that he probably wanted to hear, but then realized he was wrong. But nonetheless, God was attentive to his wrong heart. So God is attentive to us, right? God is dedicated. He has, he's so dedicated. Let me say this. He could have chosen any other nation to be their God. But he chose this 
people that were nothing. Israel. He called them Israel, right? He built them up. He made them a nation. You realize that. God made Israel a nation. Israel would not be anything without God. But he chose them to be their, to be their God. And although they were unfaithful, he was dedicated to being their God. The, he brought new meaning to the term, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He, he brought a meaning that, that, that shows us when we look at everything that Israel did. It shows us that God is not ready to strike us. He wants us to have relationship with him. And throughout the book of Isaiah, he tells them, I am the Lord your God, and my glory I won't give to another. And what do they do? They, they're, they're worshiping idols. I am the God, you know, that I am the, 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 the God that say of your salvation. And what do they do? They look to another. And, and this goes on and on. This is like a, the whole of, your, of, of the Israel's journey, let's call it, was literally being in rebellion against God's command and his law. And yet, uh, you don't see him divorcing them. As a matter of fact, his word says, and you can write this down, God hates divorce. Why was God saying that? Because here was a nation that was supposed to be in relationship with him, and every opportunity that they got, they turned their back and went away from him. Actually, the other thing you have to write down is the, God's, the, the, the word of God says that, that God is married to the backslider. Well, that, that's a strong verbiage there. God being married to the backslider? You gotta ask yourself, what does that look like? It looks like he's dedicated to me. And it looks like he's real. He's not just making up this love story that he has with us. He's real. And God is giving. When we were when we were in our sins, wrapped up in it, 100% with no way out, he gave his only son that you should have what? Life. He gave. He gave us his Holy Spirit. Jesus went to be with the Father and gave us his Holy Spirit. He gave us life, peace, and joy so that we could live being an example and being a picture of his glory here on earth. Amen. He's faithful. When um, he didn't relent to provide a sacrifice when Abraham went to make the sacrifice that God required of him. Abraham went to take his son, take your son, your only son, and, and, and sacrifice him. He provided the ram. Right? So when it's time to, 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 to pay, God pays our way. He gives us Jesus Christ. So he's, he's very, he's, he's amazing. So he's faithful. He's trustworthy or truthful. The word of God says that God is not a man that he should lie. I'm going somewhere with this. And he's loving. You know, we can't love just because. The scripture in 1 John says that we love because he first loved us. Okay? So God is in it all. So... That we can, he's done it all, and we, we can see with all of this that he wants good for us. Not only that, but he makes so many promises in his word, which we know are what? Yes and amen. So if you believe that God wants good things for you, then you ask him, right? You have to ask him. If you believe that God is all these things, and I believe we do, then we need to ask him these questions, you know, ask him the questions, ask him for things, ask him to move. It, it's pretty amazing because when Moses said, oh, no, don't do that, did God go and slay the people anyway? No. He put up with them because Moses said, oh, no, don't do that. Moses asked him. That's the type of relationship we need to have with the Lord our God. We need to be able to come to him and ask him. We need to understand that the key to answered prayer 
has everything to do with understanding one thing. You have to know that he answers, okay? So let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to uh, Luke. There's a scripture here in Luke uh, 11. We'll, we'll now try to stay. Uh, we'll try to stick to a script. Not um, So Luke 11, 5 through 10. Anybody wants to read that or should I read it? 5 through 10. You want to write? this back please thank you Luke 5 verses 5 through 10 and he said to them which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight and say to him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey and I have nothing to set before him and he will answer from within and say do not trouble me the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though, he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend. Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be open. Amen. Who believes that? So let's look at this, uh, this saying that Jesus um, gave them. Which of you shall have a friend? What is this? A friend? What, what, what does a friend look like? A friend looks like someone you know, someone you're in relationship with, right? So, which of you should have a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. I don't know who you're going to feed at midnight, but anyway. Um, three loaves, for real? <laughs> but you're, you're, you're speaking to someone you know. You're speaking to someone you know. Understand that. So you have a friend. You're asking them. And you're asking them for three loaves of bread, which is some, some, some sustenance, bread indicating something that is needed. You know, it was the staple of the time, something that is needed. Remember, when someone came to your house, you, th you had to provide something. You know, no one would come in those days into your home and, and go off hungry. So it's saying which, uh, so he's asking for three loaves. It says, for a friend, I'm asking my friend for another friend of mine. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. So this friend is coming from far away, and you're a friend that's near, near to me. So I'm a friend that's from far away, and you're a friend that's near me. And uh, it says... I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, although he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So let's look at this. When the scripture is talking about knock, you know, and the door shall be open. When when you're looking at uh, when you come to God, it's 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 showing us how when we come to God, what what really happens here. You know, you come a certain way. There's a need that you have, and because you continuously ask God, eventually you're gonna get what you ask Him for. 
And look at what it was. The need was for sustenance. It was not for something, you know, crazy. I, I need a car. I need a house. This is all about food, right? And yet, because of the man persistently asking for the thing, this particular parable says that he got what he asked for because he was persistent. You cannot distrust God and get what you want. You cannot walk in without faith and think that you're going to get anything from God. Because the scriptures clearly state that without faith, it is impossible. Let me repeat that again. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So what this is saying is that when you come and ask for something, you have to believe that you're going to receive what you're asking for. And if you haven't seen it, you're going to keep asking for it until you get that thing that you at that which you ask for. You got to believe something, saints. You have to believe something. So basically, eventually, after constantly, right? And then what does what, what do you get? And I say to you, then Jesus, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend. That's interesting. Because he's his friend. Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. God will give you everything that you have need of. Okay? So I say to you, then, then, it's, then, then Jesus says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find not and it will be and, and and it will be open to you for everyone who acts receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks it will be open and then he goes on to talk about if a son asks for bread uh from any among you will he give him a stone so basically uh first of all it's talking about how we have how we come into this kingdom by asking right asking for forgiveness and and asking god to to be asking jesus to be lord of our lives and then it goes on to talk about uh how god provides for for his children and and the faithfulness he if you ask him for bread he's not going to give you a, he's not going to give you um a stone and um he goes on and, and you guys know the scripture where he talks about um uh, uh you know not not giving you a serpent and so forth and so on right but what I'm saying here is that our persistence is important in our walk because most people ask certain things and they're double-minded, as it says in James. You know, they 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 um, they uh, they ask for one thing one day and then the next day they ask for the exact opposite. It's like God is like, oh, which one do I do for him? God is like, ah, 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 ah. no. God knows what's good for you, and he's waiting for you to ask him according to his word. See, some people say, oh, you got to ask according to God's will. You have to ask according to his word because he's, he, he, the, the scripture clearly states that he's, uh, how, does this, how does it go? He's, uh, he performs, did I write this down? Hold on, because I, I have a note here on this. Let's see. I did write this down. There is a word that talks about he performs his word. Pastor Jerry, do you remember the scripture that talks about God performing his word? Pastor Jerry, there you go. Did I write that down? I was trying to give you the address because I think that's a very important scripture. Okay, uh, I'll find it for you because I really think it's an important scripture for you to write down and know for that matter. So if anybody can beat me to it. Okay, I'll go there and see. That is an important scripture for us to, 112, let's see what it says. Then the Lord said, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. 
Is it a different translation? Can you hear Mike? There's a, I must have seen it in another translation. I, have, I, I am watching over my word to perform it in the English Standard Version, right? So if it's his word, he's going to do it and he's going to accomplish it. It's his word. An example is when, uh, when Moses, uh, when they came out of Egypt and the Lord had, had said that he would destroy the people, um, one of the things that Moses uh, brought up was, well, how, how, how are you going to do that? What are they going to say? They're going to say that you, uh, basically he's saying, you're, they're going to say that you made a promise and you didn't keep it. Basically, they're going to say that you, that you took us out of Egypt and you couldn't deliver or take us or, you know, take us to the place that you promised. That those were Moses' words speaking to the Lord, right? And the, the, the point of the matter is that God listened to him, although he could have done, and he would have been right in doing it because they disobeyed. But for the sake of what they would say about his people, because you see the Bible also says that he's a jealous God, for the sake of what they would say about his people, guess what? He did not destroy them. Come closer to the mic. We can't hear you. Just what he told us that um, the Lord said to the people, do well, for I am jealous. The Lord said unto them, thou hast well pleased, for I will take them at my word. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that's Jeremiah uh, 112. Jeremiah 112. It, that's the King James. But when you look at all of the different versions, it would be a good idea to look at every single version and see what, what it says. It's important that you realize that God is going to act on his word. It's his word, right? And, and he's going to perform it. So we can believe that what his word says is true. Not only that, but that is true for us as well because he loves us. Every word that he puts out there that applies to you as a son. I mean, when we're talking about Moses and we're talking about... Um, uh, Abraham and Moses, the scripture calls him, calls them friends. So I tell my, my friend Abraham what I'm about to do. And the scripture speaks of, of Moses as a friend as well. But in this new uh, dispensation, this new uh, uh, time of grace that we're in, where Jesus Christ has, sh has already shed his blood, he's brought us in and he calls us sons and daughters. And I go back to the scripture that I said early on, I think it was lesson six, where I said, um, to, to them that believe, he has given, us, give, given them the right, it's a legal term, the right to become sons and daughters. There was a, a term for adoption that meant that in, in adoption in, 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 in the Old Testament times, when you adopted someone, you couldn't just get rid of them. You, 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 they were yours forever. You couldn't, like, not, you can't disinherit an adopted, you know, child. And why do we always consider things that are so contrary to the heart of God and, con and, and believe that he could even turn up his back on us? Right? How, how does that work? But anyway, so he here's another thing. God is so faithful, amen? Um... I'm just going to state this. You will always act on what you believe in or on what you believe. If you believe something, that is going to be your reaction. Right? If someone tells you something and it's contrary to what you believe, you're going to state that because it is just how we are built. We're built to react. We're supposed to respond, but literally we are reactive people, right? Right? If you believe that God wants to use you to establish his kingdom, then you will ask him, and he will use you. But here, here's a, a, a scripture that I was looking at. I was reading in Matthew 14, 
And this is a weird way of bringing it around, but maybe you could bear with me in my uh, odd way of, of putting things together. And in Matthew 14, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew, is it 4? Mm, let me look it up. Matthew 14 or 4. I know what it is. I just want you to have the, I have it written down. I just want you to have the address. Matthew uh, 14. Let's see. Uh, yep, Matthew 14, 1. I may as well read through this account here. At that time, Matthew 14, 1, uh, you could read also in Mark uh, 6, I think starting at uh, verse 22. It says, at that time, Herod the Tetriarch, the Tetriarch heard the reports about Jesus. And he said to his attendants, this is John the Baptist. He has risen from the dead. That is why... Um, Miraculous powers are at work in him. Speaking of Jesus, right? But his issue is with John. Now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herod the, uh, Herodias, his, brother's, uh, his brother Philip's wife. For John had been saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. Herod wanted to kill John, but he was afraid of the people because they considered John a prophet. On Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herod, uh, Herodias danced for the guests and pleased Herod so much that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she asked. Prompted by her mother, she said, give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed, but because of the oaths and his dinner guests he ordered that her request be granted and had john the bat and had john beheaded in prison his head was brought in a platter and given to the girl who carried it to her mother john's disciples came and took his body and buried it then they went and told jesus First of all, what in the world would we have to give the head of anyone to a child? That's one. That's crazy. But, but because of the wickedness of her mother that put her up to this. You see, sin can be propagated in so many different ways. Because of the wickedness of people, things, horrible things happen here on earth. Because of the wickedness of people, many people die. And we, we're even seeing it today. But... That's another story altogether, right? So here's the thing. The king was distressed, but because of his oath. Let me just say this. In biblical times, one of the things that people um, guarded was their word. Your word was your oath. Whatever you said, you did. And why did that work that way? Because that's how people respected you. That's how people viewed you. It's how, it's, it's how people formed their opinion of you. And if you were wishy-washy, flip-flop, you know, people would view you a certain way. So people would guard over their, uh, their word. Excuse me. Excuse me one second. So people would guard over their word. So if you said something and you didn't do it, you're, you know, people would not uh, consider you trustworthy or faithful or, or anything like that. I had to turn that on so I can power up my PC who was dying in power. I'm so sorry about that. So, um, so in this particular case, you have to understand, Harry is a man of stature, a man uh, of, of reputation, uh, someone whom uh, the people come to, and he had friends there. What would happen if he did not do what he said? They would look at him and say, this guy is wishy-washy. He says one thing and does another, right? But in this particular case, because he gave his word and people heard him, because of his oath and his dinner guests, they heard him. 
if they had not heard him, he could go, you know, and do whatever he wanted to do and go. But they heard him say that. So he went and did what he said, you know, what he promised he would do. It was a promise. The oath is a promise. So, so that is a wicked man keeping his word over something that is totally wicked and honoring his word over that. So the promise means that much to this man. How much more will God keep his promise to us being a righteous and good God? And, and, and yet those people believe man just because of how he carried himself and his practices and they watch his practices throughout. So he, was, he would you know, be considered in their standard a good person or a person that honor that's honorable but our god is faithful and just he keeps his word he has promised certain things to us and because he has promised these things guess what we know that we have the petition that we've asked of him so when we talk about when we talk about key to answered prayer i believe that knowing that god answers and knowing that God is true and understanding that he does not relent, he doesn't go back on his word, is so important. Because if you do not believe that God can do what he said he can do, then I pity the person that's praying that doesn't believe. I really do. Because... God has proven himself over and over and over again. We have an example with Elisha and Elijah. Elisha followed Elijah, and he wanted a double portion. That was what? It wasn't more power or more. What, what he was going to be left with was the position. Right? I mean, when you go, I want a double portion. And what um, Elijah said to him, you're asking a lot. Because it's not about, listen, the, the position is not about the fact that Elijah can just say here Eli Elijah can say here Elijah here's the position now you're the prophet you're next in line you go ahead and do what you do and represent God to the people it's simple you you've been with me this long here take it go ahead no but here's the thing the the the, the whole thing about it is the people have to acknowledge you as the man that God sent without having the ability to do the things that your predecessor did, no one was going to acknowledge you as being the man on the spot for God. So he was left with a dilemma when, when, when he knew, because uh, the prophets came to Elijah and said, don't you know that your, um, your father um, is going to be leaving you today? He said, yeah, but shut up. Be quiet. I'm, I'm Maria's terms, just shut up. Don't say nothing. He followed Elijah. Elisha followed Elijah that day, and then when, he, when, when Elijah was crossing over, he, what did he do? He take the mantle, he tapped the Jordan, and the waters parted, right? The peop Where were the other prophets when that happened? They were looking on, the scripture says, and that they were watching from a distance, it says, okay? So when they saw that, it's like, whoa, man of God, we know him, he's done a lot of things, he's the man, right? So now they go on to the other side, and when they get there, the chariots of God and the horsemen and the horses, they, they just, they, they, they show up and they rapture, they take up, well, I use the word rapture and it's not in the Bible, they take up Elijah, and guess what's left? The mantle or the, the, co the cloak, the coat that Elijah had. So what does Elisha do? He picks up what's left. He goes over the Jordan. I got to get to the other side. And what does he say? Where is the God of Elijah? What happens? The waters open up. He crosses over. When he gets over there to the other side, I can guarantee you all of Israel knew that he was the new person that God had called. Is that true or what? He is now the person that God has called, right? Persistence, people, persistence. 
believing. If you do not believe that God can do all the things that he said he can do, you cannot be a good representative of God in this place where we live. You cannot be. Because a double-minded man is unstable in not some of his ways, but all of his ways. And I'll tell you something. When he got to the other side, I am sure that he believed everything that God did and everything that was being spoken of God. And that he, he also believed that God would use him. He didn't just say, oh, please, Jordan, open them. He said, where is the God? I have to get to that side. I need them to know that I, I am now the next one in charge of of, 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 of presenting God to, to the world. Where is the God? of? Well, you got to believe that your God is going to show up. You have, I mean, you're, you're a child of God and you don't believe he's going to show up. You may as well be an orphan because they're the ones that don't know where their parents are. They don't know where, where, where the next anything is going to come from. They can't stand on anything. So guess what? They can't pray for anything. It's not until you know that there is hope and that there is a God and that he answers and that he does and that he's faithful and he has promised and he brings it to flourishing and completion. That's when you can walk in power and in victory. So if you want to know the keys to answered prayer is knowing that the God of the universe answers prayer, that he has made you his child and that he wants to use you. But you have to believe that he's all that and then some. He's not a little God in this little box and maybe does little things. My I serve a great God. So today, where is the God of Elijah over this coronavirus in the name of Jesus? Enough is enough is enough. Ah, uh, God help us. I'm telling you, um, for the sake of for the sake of the oath, John the Baptist did what he I, I mean Herod did what he was afraid to do. For the sake of an oath. The God that I serve. He's so faithful. He is so faithful. And he gave his word. And he's not going back on it. He's just and true. He wants so much more for us. Than what we even realize. What we even know of. What we can even fathom or imagine. He wants it for us. And all we have to do. Is ask. And let me tell you, most of the time it's not about us. Because when you're in relationship, most of the stuff you do, you do it for the for your for the next for your the person that you're in relationship with. You go out of your way. You do things for them more than you do for yourselves. When they want something, you jump up and you do it, and you're not fussing and carrying on because you want to do it for them with a just with joy. You know, it's not even a fussing, and that's why the Bible talks about you know not to not to do anything uh, murmuring and complaining. Stop fussing. Just do it with joy. God asks you to go, go. When you, because when you ask him for something, he does it. It's relationship. Right? Any questions? Any comments? Anything you take away from this lesson? Be persistent. Never give up. I agree. Amen. That's one, two, and three. <laughs> God answers. And what's the other one? God is faithful. You know those two things? You know that whatever you ask, you have the, you have, you know, the petition that you've asked. Amen? Uh, obviously, this is not about asking for crazy things, okay? The Bible clearly say, says in the book of uh, Psalms 37.4, it says, delight yourself in who? Delight yourself in the Lord. Don't try delighting yourself in everything that comes and goes and then thinking you're going to be asking for what you want. And No, it says delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you. Why is that? If he if you're if he's your delight, your desire is. Him. Your desire is for him, for his righteousness, for his peace, for his joy, for his love. If you delight yourself in him, he does what he needs to do in you. Amen? I won't even go there. <laughs> I have notes. We won't go there. So in John 15, it says, 15, 15. 
I'll start with that one. But I really want to get to 16 so desperately. But we'll go through it. It says, no longer do I call you servants. You people who are now praying, you're not praying as servants. For a servant does not know what his master is doing. Let me repeat that. If you are a servant, you don't know what your master is doing. Your master is not going to give you all the particulars and all the details and, and the big picture and the how-to. He might send you with a message. Many times when, when the master sent a, a, a servant with a message, he sealed that message so it would not be seen except by the person that the message was being sent to. And if that message uh, arrived open, ah, uh, hello, right? So what are, what are we, servants? I mean, think about this. So, but I have called you friends. For all things, Jesus is saying, I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. So we're friends with Christ, right? We're friends with Jesus because he came as a man, right? And ha had relationship with his disciples and he's speaking of that. He says, I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. So a friend wants good for a friend. Someone that's in relationship, I'm going to teach you. I'm going to show you all the things that I know because I want good for you. Hey, when you have a friend that doesn't want to see you succeed, I don't know what that is, but look out. Uh, or a friend that wants to thank you. I didn't even say it. Word, manipulate and use you. I don't know what that is. Keep moving. A friend that takes advantage of you. After a while, that's not a friend, right? It says, but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give to you let me say this again that whatever you see what is it what, what does it mean to bear fruit it looks like you like you're a follower of christ a disciple which he's talking to disciples right he's talking to people that he's been with and he's taught he's their teacher he's their rabbi right and he's saying to them you need to bear fruit but the reason that your fruit should remain you're not bearing fruit for any other reason right but that as you bear fruit, it's known whose you are. And then when it's known whose you are and you start asking the Father, he's going to do. And when you ask the Father in Jesus' name, it says that he asks the Father in my name that he may give you, right? What you ask for. How does it work? That whatever you ask the Father in my name, Jesus says, he may give you. Prayer, the keys, you got to know some things. And if you're praying without knowledge, you're just wishful thinking. I mean, think about it. You have to know what the word says about who God is. You have to know what the word says about who he's made you. And then you have to ask him for some things. And you have to believe that you can change the place where you are because God is for you. God wants to make himself known. God wants to reveal himself in and through you. He wants the world to know that he's alive. Where is the God of Elijah? Let that cloak touch something in your life and see how that thing won't open up and let you through. Amen. Prayer, guys. Keys to prayer. I gave you what they are based on what I see in Scripture. I can't give you what anyone else says. You can read through this. Uh, your final exam will probably be a short essay. Maybe a long essay? No. Uh, but it will be based on the stuff that we discussed in the last, what is it, three lessons, right? Uh, I believe it's um, six, seven, and eight. And it's going to be fun because these have been the most amazing three lessons that I've had to uh, walk through for myself and to share with you. And I pray that they have been impactful to you because I know it's been impactful to me. So what I, what I desire for me, I desire for you. But I just want you to remember that 
whatever you ask the Father in Jesus' name, he will give it to you. Other, other scripture says that whatever you ask, he will do. And I don't know what else can convince you to pray with boldness. I don't know what else can convince you to pray with conviction. I don't know what else can convince you to, to, to seek his face and in fellowship, remembering that Jesus, everything he did, he sought the Father. He says, everything that I've asked the Father, he's given. And I do everything that he says. It's relationship. You want to answer prayer, you got to have a relationship with your God. I, I never stop saying this, and it's a scripture that I use every time I minister or share, and I don't know why it always comes up. It's probably because it's the only one I memorize. But anyway, um, it says, They that know their God will do great exploits. Them that know their God will do great exploits. That's all you have to do is allow yourself to be used by God so that he will use you to do great exploits and magnify and glorify his mighty holy name that the world would know that there is a god in heaven that the god of israel is alive and well and that when you ask him for something it's gonna come to pass don't be asking him for foolishness ask him for what's important ask him for what his what's your heart in this matter I tell you, when I sat in there and I saw the scripture and how God gave it to me, I was excited. I was like, yes, gave me a nugget. Hallelujah. And I thanked him for it because I know this is important to our walk, important to, to, to who we are and why we've been put here. There is a kingdom that has to expand. The kingdom of heaven here on earth, the kingdom of heaven, you saints here on this earth, has to make this kingdom expand by the preaching of the word, by the signs and the wonders that come with the preaching of the word. He said that they'll happen. I believe it. Let's see it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Dismissed. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Father God, for you are the God of Elijah. Hallelujah. You're the God that parted the Red Sea. You're the God that parted the Jordan. You're the God that parted the Jordan again. Joshua, then Elijah, then Joshua. You parted the Red the, the, you, you parted the Jordan so many times, Lord. We thank you for the parting of the Jordan in our lives. We thank you, Father, for parting the Jordan of, of this particular virus that's, that's eating away at people and and the news that comes that brings fear we thank you for parting the jordan of fear in the name of jesus we thank you father god that you are mighty that you are awesome that you are real that in you there is peace hallelujah in you there is healing and in you and in you alone we have the ability to stand we have the ability to look to you and know that our help comes from you we have the ability not to shrink back we have the ability to push forward to the mark of the high calling is only found in Jesus Christ and because of it we will declare we will proclaim we will live like people of faith instead of people that are in fear we will not allow in the name of Jesus the news that's in the airways to take us over we will not allow depression in the name of Jesus we will not allow the lie in the name of Jesus we will not allow sickness in the name of Jesus we will not allow anything that's contrary to your word to infiltrate these temples that you built and Holy Spirit dwells in, oh God. We thank you, hallelujah. We thank you, hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit here on earth. Just like you shook it when Jesus died on the cross, hallelujah, shake it again now over this coronavirus in Jesus' mighty name. We speak life. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you're the God that is more than enough. You are the all-sufficient Father. You are great. You are the great I am. And we have no fear, Father God, for you are with us. Your rod, your staff, they comfort us. Hallelujah. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Hallelujah. 
for you are with me. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God, that, that goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. Goodness and mercy. Not this stuff is out there, but goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. I speak this into the lives of every hearer, everyone that is in within the reach of my voice, Father, in the name of Jesus, solidify this in their heart, oh God, that they would walk in victory and they would not shrink back. May the things of this world not shake them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for prayer. Thank you for relationship. Thank you for making us sons and daughters and giving us the right to become sons and daughters because of your son Jesus. Thank you for protecting your people, your saints, your beloved. We thank you and we love you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Uh, I have a question. Do you guys want to meet next week for um, for a review, or you just want to jump right into a simple? It's basically based on the scriptures that I shared. Um, that would work perfectly fine. I didn't say it was going to be multiple essays. You guys are putting th words in my mouth. Stop putting words. They'll probably be... If the Lord... No, it's not. It doesn't have to... It'll be in a, on a topic. How's that? How about if I, how about if I give you three or four topics, and you choose? Or I'll put the topics, and you choose which one you want to, you want to address. But the one you choose, make sure you have a good argument for it. <laughs> Make sense? No, what I'm saying is, don't give me fluff. Give me, give me. I want. I'm. You know, when 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 you go through a class like this, you want to make sure that people are solid in what they believe, and that they can, you know, that they can pray the way they. So if I ask you something like, um, how do you, um, uh, how would you pray for this situation? I don't want to hear some soft stuff. I want to. Scripture. We agree? Is that a plan? Yep. Right? This way. You want to take the test next week? That's my question to you guys. Do you want to take the test next week, or you want to study for a week and then come back? Or I figure because I, I want to avoid anything that may stop us from gathering and stuff like that, so I'm trying to move ahead a little bit. You want to take the fi the mid the uh, final next week? Well, you've got my number. If you have any questions, shout. But. It's all based on truth. So if you know God's word and make sure, please do not add stuff outside of what we've discussed because there's a lot of word that you have in you that we've taught for other classes. I want to make it very specific to this class. This way I know you understood this class. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Any comments, objections? We're going to be like like the Senate. Who, a motion to... Speak foolishness. Does anybody agree? No. <laughs> who, 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 you know, who opposes and who you oppose it? You, see, it approve. Uh, what is it? Motion approve. Motion to vote. Yeah, it's like for real. We're trying to do this like in in a in a way where we can all be comfortable with this. These motions and emotions. So we're good for that. So no, just straight into test. Do you have any questions or you want to talk about anything to do with uh, the last three lessons? No, no, that wouldn't be fair because then I give you the answers to the questions and the minute. Mm, so you're.
and that's almost like a pastor jerry move where he gives us the uh the review the day of the test and then one hour review and then one hour test and then gives us 20 then he gives us 25 questions for one hour that was carol all right carol did it oh i thought it was it was dr carol sorry sorry i blamed you pastor jerry <laughs> all right so thank you lord you guys have a blessed night get home safely and um stand and when you're done standing stand some more amen <laughs>